Hello guys, you're welcome once again. My name is Emily K. Manner. In this video, we are going to be looking at the top three skills you need to grow a profitable blog. The top three skills you need to grow a profitable blog. In my previous video, I shared with you some of the uh, ways to know a profitable niche. Things you need to do to be sure that the niche you are going into is actually a profitable one. You'll see the link somewhere around this video. Click on it to watch that video so that you don't go into a niche that is not profitable and you are wondering why you're not making money from it. The moment you're able to find a niche that is profitable and move into it with all your energies, all your strategies, you will be able to succeed in no distant time. So today I'm going to be sharing with you the top three skills you need to grow a profitable blog. What happens when it comes to growing a blog is that you must apply some skills. What makes a profitable blogger or a successful blogger and um, someone who is struggling to make money from their blog is the differences in the skills they are applying, differences in the strategies they are applying. If you are not applying these three skills in your blog, I guarantee you that your blog is not going to be successful. But before that, please, if this is your first time of watching this video, if it's your first time of coming across my video, please do me a favor by subscribing to this channel, share this channel, give this channel a thumbs up, and as you subscribe, please turn on your bell notification and share this video, like this video so that more people will see it. That's the way the YouTube algorithm works. If you like this video and share it, more people are going to see it. And if you have questions or you, you can also leave a comment for me as well, leave a comment in the comment section to let me know where you are watching this video from and what you benefited watching my video. It also helped this video to rank better on YouTube. As we've said that, please, let's move straight into what we have for today. The first, three, the first skill you need to grow a profitable blog is what we call content writing. Content writing. When it comes to blogging, content is key. Content is key. You cannot run for a keyword you don't have in your blog. If you've not written about how to make money as a, 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 a how to make side income as a college student, you are not going to run for it when someone's go online to search for how do I make money or how do I grow my side income as a college student. It's not going to work. So you need to master how to create the right kind of content. You need to master how to create what people are looking for. You need to master how to actually write in a way that is easy for people to read. That has to do with readability. How easy it is for people to read your blog. If you don't learn all these things I'm talking about, it will be very difficult for you to make money from your blog. So the first aspect we are going to be looking at is the introduction to copywriting. After that, we'll look at why content writing works. We'll now look at content writing mistakes to avoid. And I'll also show you where to learn content writing. So there's a whole lot we are going to be learning in this particular segment of this video. So pay attention as we move right into it. So the first question is, what is content writing? And I said here that content writing is a process of creating written material, typically for digital media, such as websites, blogs, and social media platforms. When you create content on any of these platforms, digital media like website, blogs, and social media platforms, you are actually doing content writing. You are actually doing content writing. But the difference is that the way you create content for your social media platform is not the same way you create content for your blog. Very important. The way you create content on your social media platform is not the same way you create content for your blog. Let's, look, let's take my uh, social media platform as an example. My blog is specifically targeted for the foreign market, the US, Canada, Australia. That is exactly the uh, UK, Canada, and even Germany. That's exactly where my blog is focused on. I want to serve that particular market. 
Whereas my social media platform is focused on serving mostly Africans, mostly African. That is why the content I create on my social media platform might not make it to my blog. And some of the blog content I create on my entrepreneurbusinessblog.com might not make it to my social media platform. So you see that the content there, the content on both platforms are not the same. So what we are saying here is that content writing is the process of creating written material, typically for digital media, such as websites, blogs, and social media platform. So you have to pick the platform you want to serve. If you have a blog, you must learn how to create content that fits specifically into your blog, the content that fits specifically into your social media platform. Don't try to jump out of them together. Reason being that on your social media platform, you can, you can choose to play around. You can choose to use common words that people can relate to within your city, within your city or within your country. You can use that on your social media platform, but when it comes to your blog, people outside might not be able to relate to that, so you have to tone it down. And I say here that the goal of content writing is to inform, educate, or entertain the audience while also promoting a product. The difference between people who are making money from their blog or from their content writing effort and those who are not making money is in this last line that says, why also promoting a product? If you inform people, educate them, or entertain them without promoting any product or a service, you are not going to make money. That is the way it works. So you must be able to find products that are relevant to your audience. You know, like we always teach, we say that find a product for your audience, not looking for audience for your products. Find a product for your audience, not looking for audience for your product. It's harder to create a market demand than simply finding a product for an existing market. So when you find an audience, you have to start informing them, educating them, and entertaining them so that you can promote a relevant product to them. And if for any reason you've already created your product, don't just put your product out there in the market and start selling and start telling everyone, buy my product, buy my product. No, you have to start by informing them. Inform them that this is what you do. Inform them that this is where you can be found. Educate them on how your product is going to benefit their life. Educate them on how your product is going to solve their unique problems. And also in the course of doing that, entertain them, make them laugh. Make them feel a certain kind of emotion. That is what entertainment does. It will kind of generate a level of emotion in them. Let it touch their emotional button. Entertainment can come in various ways. It can make someone laugh. It can make someone cry. It can make someone uh, shed tears or whatever. It, the most important thing is that you are touching their emotion before you can now introduce your product service or brand, depending on what you are selling. If it's a product, it could be a service, it could be just, we are trying to create brand awareness. And we say that content writers use social media, uh, search engine optimization techniques to ensure that their written material is easily discoverable by their target audience. For what you've written to be easily discovered, you need to optimize it for search engine. That is exactly what search engine optimization talks about. We are going to learn about it more in the next uh, slide. We see that content writing can include a wide range of topics and formats, such as articles, blog posts, product description, email newsletters, email newsletters, and social media updates. It could come in various forms, social media updates, email newsletters, blog posts, and the rest of them. These are the various things that you can do to, to create content for your blog. The key to effective content writing is to understand the target audience and create written material that is relevant, valuable, and engaging. 
the key to effective content writing is to first understand the target market. If you don't understand a market, if you don't understand a target audience, you will not be able to serve them very well. You will not be able to know what is relevant to them. You will not be able to know what they can engage with. You will not be able to know what is valuable to them. If you create content because of what you feel, you are going to be making a huge mistake. It is not about you. Content writing is not about you. It's about the target audience that you want to serve. So you have to, first of all, identify the audience and begin to create content that is relevant to them. When you create content that is relevant to someone, the person will pay attention to you. That is the way it works. So this is how to do content writing. And content writing is a skill that you must master. Don't just stop at watching this video alone. Take your time, do research. Tons of research on the internet, YouTube, uh, Facebook, look for someone that can coach you to actually master content writing so that when you implement it in your business, it's going to be a game changer for you. Not just in blogging alone, but in the business you are already doing. Content writing will help you a lot. Let's look at the content writing mistakes to avoid. Number one is to is the failure to know your target audience. I said something about it earlier. If you fail to know your target audience, you are going to be writing nonsense. That is the best way to describe it. When you don't know your target audience, you are going to be stressing yourself, trying to talk to everybody. Please understand that everybody is not your audience. Everybody is not your audience. You cannot serve everybody. So you must be able to identify the segment of the market you want to serve. Do you want to serve people between the age of 25 to 30? Or do you want to serve people between the age of 45 and above? Or do you want to serve only senior citizens? Who exactly do you want to serve? That is in the area of understanding your audience in terms of age. How about academic qualification? Do you want to serve people who are undergraduates? You need to understand the kind of audience you want to serve before you move into it. Another content writing mistake you need to avoid is writing boring articles or writing articles without an outline. Do not make the mistake of writing an article without an outline. Before you create content, you need to get your topic right. You have to do a research on how to create an article that will rank easily on search engine. So the moment you find the title, the, for, the next thing you have to do is to create an outline. What would be the workflow? How is this thoughts going to flow from your introduction to the various topics you are going to be discussing in subtitle? So that is your outline before you can start developing each of the outlines. Next mistake people make is keyword stuffing and keyword cannibalization. Keyword stuffing has to do with repeating one thing over and over again until it gets to a point where it becomes boring to the ear. Let's say, for instance, you have an article that's the, where you want to write about how to start plumbing business in Nigeria. And the introduction says, would you like to start a plumbing business in Nigeria? Here are the mistakes you make when starting a plumbing business. If you are into plumbing business, do not make this kind of plumbing business mistakes. That is keyword stuffing. Just because you want to target plumbing business, you are now repeating plumbing business over and over and over again until it comes to a point where it's boring to the readers. Not only that, it's also boring to search engine and you are going to get penalized for it. So when you are trying to rank for a particular keyword, do not overuse that keyword. Try to find related keywords to that particular tool so that I can use it interchangeably. Instead of repeating business, business over and over again, you can have words like company, you can have words like startup, you can have words like venture, you can have words like enterprise. Use them interchangeably where it suits them very well. Don't just repeat a particular keyword over and over again. It will lead to keyword stuffing and that will harm your blog, that will harm your content writing effort. The next one is keyword cannibalization. Keyword cannibalization is where you try to rank for the same keyword over and over again using the same blog. You've written about how to start a plumbing business before. Next thing you are writing about how to start a plumbing business with ease. 
on the same keyword, you are causing what we call keyword cannibalization. And before you know it, the two blog posts begin to cancel out each other and they will no longer rank on search engine. Do not make that mistake when you are creating content online. The moment you've written about a particular keyword, do not target the same keyword again. If for any reason someone has outrank you using that particular keyword, the best thing to do is to go back to your existing post, update the content, add more keywords to it, update it, go back to your search uh, Google Search Console, re-index the post, and before you know it, your blog will start ranking at the top of search engine again, ahead of that, uh, those of your competitors. The next mistake you need to avoid is failing to use a CTA. What is a CTA? A CTA simply means a call to action. When you create content online or offline, always ensure that there's a call to action. Always ensure that there is something you want them to do. There are two basic call to action that people use. One is the generation. The next one is sales. What do you want them to do? It could be to click on a particular link to read a post. It could be to leave a comment for you. It could be to buy a particular product. Let it be that there is a call to action you want them to read. Most times, human beings are funny. They, they, they don't know what to do until you actually tell them what to do. So now they are done reading your article and they are wondering, what exactly does he want us to do at the end of reading this post? That is why it's important that you tell them right inside your post. Don't think that they will automatically know what to do after reading the post. If you want them to buy a product after reading the uh, post, say it in the comment in, in, at the end of your post that this is what I want you to do by the time you are done reading this post. If you want them to subscribe to your channel or whatever, let them know in your video or in your text, in whatever you publish the content, let them know right there. If it's on social media, let them know. If it's on, uh, on your blog, let them know. It could be to leave a comment for you. Let it be that there is a call to action to every single content you create on your blog and on the internet. And the last one, not the least, is writing for SEO alone and ignoring human beings. Most times people believe that the best way to grow their blog is to focus on optimizing and re-optimizing and re-optimizing until it gets to a point where search engine will feel so happy with you. Why at the same time you are ignoring the, the people that will actually read the post? What's the point someone landing on your blog and leaving immediately because the content is super optimized but it's irrelevant to them. It's not valuable to them. It's not human friendly. In fact, the content looks like something like that was written by a robot, by an artificial intelligence tool. Don't make that mistake. Always consider human beings. Try to speak to people in the way you would have possibly spoken to them if both of you were to see each other face to face. If you want to teach me about how to make money online, you should be able to talk to me in the best language that I will understand as a human being. Relate to me. Try to, try to touch my emotional button. Those things that make me uh, unhappy when it comes to my financial situation. Try to talk about it before you can start showing me the opportunities that we have on the internet on how to make money online. So do not focus on writing for SEO alone. Also write for human beings because... At the end of it, all the people who are going to read your post are human beings, not robots, not bots. They are human beings. So if you don't create content that resonates with them, they will not come back to your blog again. And search engine will begin to identify the way people are leaving your blog. And they will assume that your blog is not relevant to your target audience. These are the five mistakes you need to avoid when it comes to content writing. And if this is your first time of watching the video, let me remind you, my name is Emily K. Mane. Please subscribe to my channel. Turn on your bell notification and turn on your notification by clicking on the bell icon. Like this video and also leave a comment. Let me know where you are watching this video from so that this video will be seen by many more people. All right. Thank you for doing that. Let's move to the next slide. The next, thing you, the next skill you need to grow a profitable blog is what we call search engine optimization. If you want to grow a, grow a blog that will perform very well on search engine and also make you a ton of money, you must master search engine. 
I understand that a lot of people are teaching uh, access arbitrage rights and where you use traffic to grow your blog. But that thing is just limited. That is the only issue I have with uh, uh, that particular kind of monetization strategy. It's limited. There's a limit to what you can do with it. Being that you can get blocked at any time, you might have tons of thousands of dollars in your, in your access account. You wake up the next morning and you are blocked. But that cannot just happen to you if you master search engine optimization because you will have many more ways to monetize your blog. If you master search engine optimization, you have many ways to monetize your blog. In subsequent videos, I'm going to be teaching you different ways to make money from your blog. So do where to check back on this channel so that you can watch that video because I'm going to be doing series of videos on blogging. You don't, you, you can't afford to miss any of them. So the first question here is what exactly is SEO? What exactly is search engine optimization? And I said that search engine optimization is the process of improving the quality and quantity of website traffic to a website or a web page from search engine. The effort you put in to increase the quantity and quality. Remember, we said quantity and quality. If you have so much of website traffic that is of low quality, it will not yield to anything. It will not yield to anything. And what exactly is quality traffic? Quality traffic means people that have the financial capacity to take the 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 instruction you want them to take, especially when it comes to buying a product, that is quality traffic. People have the financial capacity, the purchasing power to buy a particular product. If you are selling, if you are selling wristwatch online and you have a website where you sell wristwatch, you have to optimize that particular website in such a way that it ranks for keywords that are relevant to your audience and not just relevant to your audience, that the same keyword will attract people of high quality, people with purchasing power to buy the wristwatch you are selling. That is when search engine optimization has been fully done. If you are only getting quantity without quality, you are still not going to make money from your blog. Someone getting 20,000 page views in a month that is of high quality will make more money than someone who is getting 50,000 uh, web traffic or page views in a month with poor traffic. So you need to understand the importance of quality and quantity. Blend them together. The, the goal is to get more of a higher quantity of quality traffic. Let me use that word. That is exactly what you'll be learning in this video. And what are some of the benefits of search engine optimization? Number one is free traffic. Set, if you do your search engine optimization very well, you are going to be getting a ton of free, free traffic from search engines. Search engine platforms like Bing, search engine platforms like Google, search engine platforms like DuckDuckGo. Uh, you also get traffic from Baidu and Yandex. These are different kinds of search engine platforms. If you optimize your blog very well, you are going to be getting free traffic from these search engine platforms. And imagine what that will mean for your business. You are not paying for the traffic. You are not paying for it. While your computer is busy paying huge amount of money to Google, you are not paying anything. And even if you pay, your free traffic will augment for your paid traffic. And it will be absolutely a game changer for you. The next benefit of search engine optimization is, is that it helps to boost your brand awareness. You might create a product today and nobody knows about you. Let's say you just went into a highly competitive niche that you don't even have the money to, 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 uh, to, get a, to pay for billboard advertising. You don't have the financial capacity to pay for billboard advertising. And your competitors are doing exactly the same thing there. They have billboards everywhere around the city, everywhere around the country, and you don't have the same financial capacity like them. What is the best way to penetrate the market. The best way to penetrate the market is by using search engine optimization. Get a blog, start creating content in that niche. Make sure you rank for all the keywords that people are looking for on the internet. Leave the billboard advertising for them at the moment because you don't have the capacity to compete with them at that level. Start doing search engine optimization on your blog 
very well. And before you know it, people will begin to hear your name. In fact, they will be the ones to reach out to you to say that we, we, we see what you do on the internet. And most people will think that you've been in the business for years, not knowing that you are just a JJC, you are just a newbie in the industry. The game changer for you is because you understood how to do search engine optimization. And the third benefit of search engine optimization is that it helps to increase your website conversion. What exactly is website conversion? It is people taking the action you actually want them to take. That is where you can boldly say that your traffic has converted. The traffic can convert when you make sales. It can convert when you generate leads. These are the major form of website conversion that we have. It could be that you want people to subscribe to your uh, lead, uh, subscribe to your list. That's you are generating leads. It could be to make sales. You want them to buy a particular product. That is website conversion. So if you have, if you do search engine optimization very well, if you do your SEO very well, it will increase your website conversion to a large extent. Please, if you are just watching this video for the first time, if you are just getting to know my channel for the first time, please subscribe to my channel. Turn on your notification by clicking on the bell icon in this video. Also, do me a favor by liking this video and leaving a comment below. Let me know where you are watching this video from and share this video with your audience. In the next slide, we are going to be looking at the SEO mistakes to avoid. What are the mistakes you need to avoid when it comes to creating content, when it comes to writing content, when it comes to growing your blog, when it comes to making money from your blog, what are the SEO mistakes you need to avoid? And if you feel like you are more comfortable reading a blog, please visit entrepreneurbusinessblog.com. You can see the link somewhere below this video, entrepreneurbusinessblog.com. I'm also going to be leaving a clickable link in the comment section, in the description below, rather, so that you can visit and read if you prefer to read about what I've written here. All right, let's move to the next slide. What are the different types of SEO? We have two types of SEO. I'm not going to be going into details here. We have what we call the on-page SEO, and we have what we call off-page SEO. Off-page on, on page SEO has to do with what to do inside your blog for your blog to rank well on search engine. Why? Off-page SEO are the things you do outside your blog for your blog to rank well on search engine. If you, if you are a student in my, if you are a participant in my blogging business masterclass, you will see how I was able to break down these different types of SEO in details. You, you will learn a whole lot about SEO. If you master on-page SEO and off-page SEO, I guarantee you that you'll be competing with big brands. You'll be competing with big brands because what they know, you know it. As they are doing theirs, you are doing yours. So there are things you have to do inside your blog. A typical example of what you do inside your blog is keyword optimization. Why what you do outside your blog for you to rank well on search engine is backlink building. Link building, let me use our word, link building. That's what you do outside. This I'm just giving you one example each. There are so many other examples. Even in my one-on-one -on -one training, I also teach it. You get to, uh, on that on page as you learn about 10 things you need to do inside your blog. 10. More than 10, in short. It's more than 10, yes. More than 10. More than 10 things you, can, you should do inside your blog for it to rank well on searching. One depends on the other. None of them is more... Uh, it's more powerful than the other one. So if you do one and neglect the other one, to a large extent, you'll still be struggling to rank on search engine. Let's look at the SEO mistakes to avoid. What are the SEO mistakes you need to avoid? Number one is that if you don't have a focus key phrase for your article, you are making a huge mistake. Focus key phrase has to do with what exactly do you want this blog post to rank for? What exactly do you want it to rank for? That is your focus key phrase. Whatever you want a post to rank for must be repeated a couple of times. In my one-on-one -on -one training, I do teach how many times you need to repeat it, where you need to place it for it to perform well on search engine. 
So you must have a focus key phrase. And if you are using SEO tool like Yoast SEO, there's a space for you to put that to your focus key phrase, telling Google that this is what I want this post to rank for. Let's say, let's use the example I started before, how to start a plumbing business in Nigeria. You can use your focus key phrase as plumbing business or start plumbing business. We use the, we call it phrase because it doesn't have to make a meaning. It doesn't have to make a full sentence. So that's why I can use start plumbing business as my focus key phrase. Instead of start a plumbing business or how to start a plumbing business just for me to make a full sentence. No, it's called focus key phrase for a reason. It, it can be a phrase. It can be a phrase. The next thing is failing to target keywords or, or rather targeting keywords with high difficulty. Every keyword you see out there is ranked between zero to 100. Zero to 50 means that the keyword difficulty is not too high and not too low. If it's at 50, it means it's not too high and not too low. If it's above 50, it means that keyword difficulty is a little bit high. In fact, if it's up to 70, 80, it means that the difficulty is very, very high. It means that as a new blog, it will be quite difficult for you to rank for that keyword. That is what it means. So if you are a new person in the blogging industry, or even if you are not a new person, but you want your blog post to start performing well on search engine, the best thing you can do is to start targeting keywords with lower difficulty. Lower difficulty. Start targeting keywords with low, lower difficulty. You can get keywords with lower difficulty within the range of 30 to 40, or within the range of 30 to 50. If you target such keywords and optimize your content very well, there's a high chance of you ranking on search engine. And the last mistake, not the least, there are so many other mistakes, but on my list, I just have to show you three alone. The last mistake is failure to do image optimization. A lot of people make this mistake. You just pick up your phone, take a picture, Upload it on, the, uh, uh, on your blog and start using it. You do not resize the image. You do not uh, compress the image. You do not rename the image. You do not even optimize the image in your blog. Don't make that mistake. Image optimization is very, very important. The reason why image optimization is very, very important is because we rank for about four things on Google. We rank for videos. We run for images, we run for audios, and we run for tests. So if you don't optimize your image very well, you've lost your chance of ranking for images. And believe me, there are keywords that you might not do well in the test aspect. You might not do well in the video aspect, but in the image aspect, you are ranking for it because people are also searching for images on the internet. So optimize your image before you use it on your blog. It's very, very important. It will increase your chances of ranking or searching. On my blog, there are some images I'm ranking for. That's the only thing I'm ranking for that particular blog post, the image. I don't know how I did it, but it works. It works. So learn how to optimize your image before you use it on your blog. The last but not the least skill is what we call SEO copywriting, SEO copywriting. And we say that say here that SEO copywriting is a process of pairing standard SEO best practices that drive traffic like keyword research with compelling words that entice users to take a specific action like buying a product or subscribing to an email list. You remember I told you that the, the, the most important Website conversion we know is lead and sales. Generate leads and generate sales. These are the two things you look at to say, oh, this website is converting very well. And how do you increase the chances of your website or your blog to convert very well is by mastering content writing, is by mastering SEO, and by mastering SEO copywriting. And in this SEO copywriting, you are pairing 
your SEO best practices, the SEO techniques that you've learned with compelling ways that will entice readers, that will motivate readers, that will persuade readers to actually take a specific action that will favor you. And that specific action could be to buy a product, it could be to hire you for a service, it could be to subscribe to your email list. So you must learn how to combine the two together. That tells us that you have to also learn copywriting. Because you're a blogger does not stop you from learning copywriting. If you learn copywriting and incorporate it in your content, people will be eager to read what you write because you'll be using compelling words on them, words that will make them desire to take action immediately. It will help you to also master power ways. There's what we call power ways. You can do a research on that. Maybe subsequent time I might do a video for you on power ways. You, you need to master how to incorporate power ways into your blog post so that people will begin to feel the energy you are feeling as you are writing that, uh, the, as you are writing the content. The use of power ways will help to increase the chances of your post appearing on searching, the chances of your post be shared on search engine as well. If this is your first time of watching my video, please do me a favor, subscribe to my channel. This channel you are watching, MNK Emmanuel, subscribe to this channel. Turn on your notification by clicking on the bell icon. Like this video, like this video, please. And also, let me know where you are watching from by leaving a comment in the comment section below. And if you prefer to read, visit my blog, entrepreneurbusinessblog.com. you see a clickable link in the description below so that you can visit and read other articles I've written when it comes to blogging. In fact, when you get to this web, this blog, go to the blogging category, blogging category, so that you can learn other blogging skills and strategies I've been teaching in the past. All right, if you are here today, I want you to know that this is not just the end of it. I want to give you an opportunity to learn more from me. Learn more from me by being a part of my blogging business masterclass. This blogging business masterclass is a video. It's a recorded video of over 15 hours where I took time to teach everything you need to know about blogging. And I made it so easy that even a 10-year-old child can watch this video, set up their blog, start generating traffic and start making money from their blog. It's very easy. You learn how to create content. You learn how to uh, do keyword research. You learn how to um, make money from your blog, different monetization strategies. There's nothing you can learn from this video when it comes to blogging. And the moment you pay for it, you have instant access to learning. And of course, I will give you the opportunity to ask questions. There's a Facebook group a Facebook community dedicated for participants of this course. The moment you get this course, you get a link to watch the video. You get a link to uh, to, to join the, 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 the Facebook community where you can ask questions at any time and get instant response from me or from any member of my team. So what you do now is to go to this link below, seller.co forward slash for C R C seller.co seller spelled as S E A S E L A R dot C O S E L A R dot C O forward slash B C R C. Go to this place, you no matter where you are watching this video from, you can have access to this blogging business masterclass. And it's very, very affordable. Very, very affordable. I have other courses that are more expensive than this, but this is the most affordable course I have right now. That is why I'm giving it to you at a very ridiculous price. Go there, get this course, and you have access to watch this video. All right, if you have gotten to this point, I'm very happy. Thank you for watching to this very point. Subscribe to this channel. Check me out on Facebook. Visit my uh, my Facebook account, MNK at MNKNG. Subscribe to my YouTube. Um, follow me on Instagram and on Twitter using at MNKNG. At MNKNG. I look forward to seeing you more.
Thank you and have a great day.